How many believe that we've had an awesome time this morning? It's just as if that session should just, we should just carry on. And I definitely know that we are definitely in the spirit. You know, the spirit of God is one. And the theme of our, of our Thanksgiving service today says, rejoice in your maker. Rejoice in your maker. Hallelujah. Amen. So all we are doing is just rejoicing in our maker this morning. We have started and we will continue to rejoice in our maker. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Father, we just bless you this morning. Within the limited time we have, Father, we pray that you will speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lord Jehovah, that which you have started already with us, Father, we pray you continue on. In the name of Jesus. You know why you are asking us to rejoice in our maker. And Lord Jehovah God is not just going to be an experience in the church, but it is going to be an experience with us every day of our life that we will continue to rejoice in you. In Jesus' mighty name. There are many songs I want to sing today. I know today is a day of singing, truly. There are many, many songs I want to sing. Just keep coming. I will rejoice in you and be glad. I will exalt your love more than wine. Draw me unto you and let us run together. I will rejoice in you and be glad. Look at that song. He said, I will rejoice in you and be glad. I'm not rejoicing because I have plenty of money in my bank accounts. I'm not rejoicing because all my prayers are answered. I'm not rejoicing because I don't have any care. I don't have any need. I'm not rejoicing in that. I'm rejoicing in my maker. I'm rejoicing in God. The fact that God is my God, I'm rejoicing in that. The fact that the one that made the heaven and the earth is my father, I am rejoicing in that. The fact that he's the one that nobody can compare with, that's why I'm rejoicing. I'm re not rejoicing because I've got it all made up. You know, we can all pamper our face and put on the powder, you know, and put on our breastwear and appear and everybody think, my goodness, this woman, she's looking so good. I'm not rejoicing in that. I'm rejoicing that this God of heaven and earth is mine. That's why I'm rejoicing. Bible says rejoice in your maker. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 149. That's where our team came, came from. Psalm 149, verse 1 to 4. As you know, every Thanksgiving Sunday, today is Thanksgiving, and all we do today is just thank God. And my desire always when I come before you is to give you reason why you should thank God. Bible says, praise God with understanding. That's the purpose of today. The Bible says in Psalm 149, verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Even this morning, the songs that we sang, we have sang them many times before. Many, many times before. But when you know when the anointing and the grace of God rests upon the song, you sing it and it's as if you've never sang it before. And that's just what happened this morning. Only two songs we sang. And it's as if we have never had those songs before. So we have sang God a new song. We give God praise. And Bible says, and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Is this not the assembly of the saints? Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Hey, joyful in their king. So when you are thinking of God, you are filled with joy. Hallelujah. Let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with the tremble and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. And he will beautify the humble with salvation. When we are rejoicing God, God is taking pleasure in his people. When we are dancing before him, he's giving him pleasure. God is, has been looking down on us this morning. And he, I'm sure he's nodding his head. My children are blessing me. You know, that's the only thing you can give God, you know. If you, cook him the, if you cook the best meal, God won't eat it. The only food you can keep to God is to give him a praise that is coming from here, from the depth of your being. Not the one that is coming from your mouth. The one that is coming from the depth of your soul. 
when you are just blessing his name and just saying, God, I'm just grateful I'm alive this morning. I'm just grateful you are my God this morning. I'm just grateful that, Lord, my name is before. The, the, the man of God that led us in prayer said, our names are written in the palm of his hand. Our walls are continually before him. So when God is opening his hand, he's seeing my face. And he's seeing your face. And he's seeing all of our faces at the same time. What a God we have. He said, let Israel rejoice in their maker. We are the sheep of his pasture. The people under his care. You know when I was meditating on this. And one of the scriptures. Psalm 97 verse 12. Psalm 97 verse 12 says. Rejoice in the Lord. You righteous. He said give thanks. At the remembrance of his holy name. So when you are remembering. When you just remember God's name. Ha! Ah, let your heart be filled with joy. I know that, you know, as we go on in our days and in our life, there are moments that we just come across in our mind and we just started smiling. And people are looking at, what, what's making you to smile? What's ma why are you smiling? <laughs> and then sometimes you just started laughing. Uh -uh. What's, why, why, why are you laughing? Because some memories are just coming to you and you're just laughing. The Bible is saying when you, when you remember God's name, give thanks. You know, when you are remembering God Almighty, you can just start laughing. And people are saying, well, what's wrong with you? Why are you laughing? Oh, I'm just remembering, remembering the name of my God. <laughs> I'm remembering the name of my God, Jehovah Shalom. Oh, God. When I think of the peace that he gives, my goodness. The peace that passes all understanding. The kind of peace you have in the midst of the storm. The kind of peace you have when you are going through the fire. And the fire, they smell you, they can't find the flame. That is why I'm rejoicing. And that is why God wants us to rejoice. And apologies this morning. I want us to learn a little from the dog. A dog? Somebody will say, a dog? Can we learn from a dog? How many of us have a dog? Ah, Dickiness have a dog. All right. Sist my sister, you have a dog. What's your name? Shout out to me. Deborah. Deborah has a dog. Another person has a dog there. Okay. So we have Dickiness and Deborah that have a dog. Many of you, by the time you hear about dog this morning, you might want to go and get a dog. Glory to God. But they, they that have the dog will understand this a lot more. Just let me be hearing, mm -hmm -hmm. yes, that's true. A dog. Do you know that a dog earns its keep by just loving its owner? That's all. That's all a job does. Ha! Ah! Many a times when you, when you come back home, dickness, and your dog comes out to you, is running, is wagging his tail, is doing that. Why? Because my owner has come, and he's just wagging his tail, and he's loving you. And some might come and begin to lick your face. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Why? Oh, because you just appear. Because your own, the owner appear, the joy, the joy of the dog, my God, his day is made. It's all over you. Everywhere you go, is wagging his tail. My owner is here. I'm sure you can imagine me with a tail this morning. <laughs> Praise God. Because that's what a, jo a dog does. He just loves his owner. That's all they do. They don't walk. They don't do anything. All they do is they love you. And all you can do. And when somebody comes to you and is wagging his tail, you will have even gotten him a gift. Can you imagine? Dickness. Maybe sometime you bought him a bone, a new biscuit, and you gave it to him. And he's... And the, the, the dog is eating and just wagging. That will teach us something, won't it? That when you just think of God, you're just rejoicing. Your heart is just, you just build me with joy that I remember my God. And I look at the internet and find all these dogs loving their owners. I mean to just show people, we have been sure you this, this, all the dogs were just, they're just loving their, their owner. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, when, even when I was doing this, I was just laughing to myself and looking at the dogs and saying, wow. Praise God. What are the things that were about the dog that we can pick up from this morning? It is excited at the sight of his owner. It involves love. A dog loves unconditionally. A dog loves unconditionally. It doesn't matter. It doesn't care about how you are. It doesn't care whether you are high or tall or short. It just loves you unconditionally. Hallelujah. Hey, it's incredibly loyal. Is that true? Dogs are incredibly loyal. Once they love you, they don't care about anyone else. Huh? Maybe that's one of the reasons I don't really like dogs. 
Because whenever they see you coming, they see you as a threat. Hey, and they already want, hey, uh, maybe that's one of the part of the dog I know that made me, uh, 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 I don't want to come close. But when you are the owner, you want to touch the owner, ah, they will fend, they will really rise up to defend their owner. Another thing is, they are very appreciative of every single gesture. They just appreciate everything. Isn't that something we can learn from? We can learn from it and appreciate God for every minutest thing that he has given to us. A dog can teach us that. It brings you plenty of reasons to smile. Dickiness, is that true? A dog brings you plenty of reasons to smile. You know, I, I saw in, in my search and preparing this, I saw some video where the owners are crying. And the dog came to them and began to lick their faces. The dogs were, the, the owner were crying and they were distressed. It just came and began to love them because why? They felt the heart of their owner. They empathized with their owner and their animals and they could see that. They bring you many friends and help you to be friendly. Many people have become friendly with other people because of their dogs. Because the dog will bring you friend. Ah, praise the name of the Lord. May the Lord continue to teach us. Even from Hanima, we can learn something. May God help us to love our God. May God help us to love him as he wants to be loved. God wants you to just, you know, you will earn your keep too by just loving God. There are some blessings that God will give you even for just loving him alone. You know what he said? He said, because you have set your love upon me. He said, with long life, I will satisfy you. Oh, that's all you have done. You have just said, you know what? This God, I'm going to love you. God said, because you have set that love on me, long life I will give to you. <clears throat> Even what you don't ask for, I will give to you. Bible says when, when Solomon gave sacrifice to God, he just said, please, just keep bringing the animal and killing it. Killing the animal. I just want to celebrate this God. I just want to appreciate this God. God said to Solomon, what do you want? Tell me what you want. And all Solomon was doing is just saying, Lord, I just appreciate you. I just want to love you. I just want to give you praise. God said, okay, 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 I hear you. I, what is it that you want? You know, that, those are the kind of love that God is looking for from us. He said, let Israel rejoice in his, in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their God, in their king. Please be joyful in the Lord. And the, the psalmist tells us in Psalm 100, as I begin to round up, Psalm 100, verse 1 to 3, he said, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him. Before his presence, we sing in. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and sheep of his pasture. I'm sure you want to hear, what, what does God say really about this? I want us to look at Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 to 24. And this is what God says. Thus says the Lord. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him who glories glory in this, that he understand and knows me, that I am the Lord, executing loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in this, I, almighty God, delight. He said, if you want to glory, don't glory in your mansion. Don't glory in all the things that you have acquired. Don't glory that you are so intelligent, everybody is coming to you for advice. Don't glory that no, when your word, you speak your word, everybody is holding on to it. He said, don't glory in anything that I've given you. In other words, don't glory in all of that. But if you want to take glory, if you want to rejoice, rejoice in this, that you know me. Rejoice that you know me. And so that's what I want you to rejoice in this morning. Rejoice that you know God. Rejoice that he is your God, that he is your maker. Just rejoice in that. And just like a, a, a owner will do to his dog, 
and just bless them because they have, they, they've just loved them. I pray this morning that as you bring your thanksgiving to God, as you remember the goodness of God this morning and remember who he is, may your heart be filled with joy. May your heart overflow with praises unto your maker. And that is the real essence of our thanksgiving this morning. May the Lord bless his word in the name of Jesus. For adventure, somebody is going through the blue this morning. Let me read what somebody put in the scripture for you. For you to know that really, all your focus should be on him at all times. Abaku chapter 3 verse 17 to 18. The Bible says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine. Though this year may not have worked out the way you planned. It's the eighth month. And you're still saying, God, where is what I've asked for? Though the labor of the olive may fail, and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the store, he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. That's all. That's all. As long as I keep rejoicing in God, we will turn things around. Do you know God? Do you know one thing I've understood is that many of us think our life is totally in our control, that we've got it all figured out. But do you know what God has not shown you the picture? He hasn't shown you the picture of what is yet to come for you. You don't even know what will happen in the next five minutes. Because in his wisdom, he kept it away from you. Hallelujah. So, well, so sometimes we worry so much about mistakes that we make. You know, that's one of the things that just dawned on me when we are doing our Bible studies on Friday. Dawned on me. You know, when Adam and Eve messed up, they thought they have messed it up. God said, no, I, you, you think I am, so di I am so disorganized to put everything in your control? Ha, 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 I have plans. You may have messed this up. I have another plan. So no matter what you have messed up in your life, it is not over. God has the best picture. And I want you to rejoice in him this morning. That God has your life covered and your best days are yet to come. So this morning, rejoice in your maker. Hallelujah. <laughs>